What's up? Welcome to the stack. I'm Nia Mushroom. Welcome back. If you've been here before, today we have another, you guessed it, you can read, you looked at the thumbnail. It's an EDH slash commander gameplay video. That's all you need to know from me. Let's take a look at who's playing what, what's playing who, and what the opening hands look like. As always, if you like this show or any of our other shows on YouTube, liking, sharing, and subscribing helps us out immensely. If you like our content and don't mind that extra mile, you can always support us over on Patreon, over at patreon.com backslash MTG the stack. Just like, would you look at that, crystals. Comment down below any of your thoughts and feelings, and we hope you enjoy the show. Okay, first up we have me playing Marin of Clan Neltoth. I keep a seven card hand with a soul ring, a birds of paradise, Destiny Spinner, Squirrel Nest, Eldritch Evolution, Mana Confluence, and an Exotic Orchard. Next up, we have Jake playing as Verena Lich Queen deck. This is more of a mill strategy as opposed to the more commonly taken approach of Zombies Tribal. He keeps a 7 card hand with a Court of Cunning, Merciless Eviction, Mind Grind, Marsh Flats, Island, Reliquary Tower, and a Skycloud Expanse. Next up, we have Steve playing his Anala Archmage Ritualist deck. He keeps a seven card hand with the Reanimate, Mystical Teachings, Arcane Signet, Mystical Tutor, Sulphur Falls, Urborg, and Basic Island. Last but not least, we have Calvin playing Edgar Markov, and he's the last of us to keep a seven card hand, keeping Caves of Koilos, Urborg, Forerunner of the Legion, Olivia Voldaren, Arcane Signet, Talisman of Hierarchy, and Rakdos Signet. Alright, so I win the die roll, I'm going to lead on drawing a card, play Mana Confluence as my land for turn, I'll tap it for green, losing a life to play Birds of Paradise, and with nothing else we'll ship it over to Jake, who will simply drop Reliquary Tower and pass the turn over to Steve. Steve's going to drop a basic island, and with that we'll move to Calvin's turn, he'll draw and play a Caves of Koilios, passing to me for the second cycle of turns. I'm going to draw a card and play that Exotic Orchard as my land for turn, then I'm going to tap it for a Colorless and play Soul Ring. After that point, I'll lose a life to the Mana Confluence, I'll tap that for black, my birds for green, and then I'll play Marin of Clan Neltoth. With nothing else, we'll pass the turn back over to Jake. He'll draw, deploy a basic island, and then he'll pass the turn to Steve, but before he can, Steve's going to cast Mystical Tutor and search for an Entomb to put on top of his library. After that, we'll move to Steve's turn. He's going to lead on a Sulphur Falls as his land for turn, then he'll tap for two and play Arcane Signet. With nothing else, he'll pass the turn to Calvin, who draws and plays a Sulphur Springs as his land for turn. He's going to follow Steve's play and play an Arcane Signet. At end of turn, I'll exile Squirrel's Nest and Force of Vigor both Arcane Signets. Steve has a response. He'll tap it for black and cast Entomb. He'll search his library for a Wanderwine Prophets. Perfect. Right. So it's Wanderwine. Yep, I see what's happening here. Yep. You're trying to do the combo. <laughs> nice cock. Nice cock. Nice cock. After that, we'll actually resolve everything. We'll put everything in the graveyard, including the Arcane Signets, and we'll pass the turn over to me. I'll untap and draw my card for turn, and I'll play Windswept Heath as my land for turn. I'll get into the red zone and attack Calvin for 3 commander damage. He'll opt to take it, then I'll fetch that Windswift Heath and I'll go search for a Bayou. After this point, I'm going to tap for 3 mana, 2 green, and 1 colorless, and I'll cast Eldritch Evolution, opting to sacrifice the birds to it. This will trigger Marin, I'll get an experience counter, and I'll search my library for a creature. In this case, I'm interested in a Vasira Seer. At this point, we're going to tap for 3, losing a life to the mana confluence to play Destiny Spinner. We'll let that floating mana float away and trigger Marin at end step bringing back Birds of Paradise, passing the turn over to Jake. Jake will draw his card for turn, play a Skycloud Expanse, and then he's going to tap out for two blue and a colorless to play Court of Cunning. He will become the Monarch. He'll try to pass the turn, but at his end step, Monarch triggers and he will draw a card. Then we will move to Steve's turn. He'll simply play Urborg and pass the turn. It's Calvin time. Calvin will untap and draw his card for turn and drop an Urborg of his own. Then he's going to tap for two mana and he'll play Rakdos Signet. After that point, I'll tap the Signet and the Urborg to play Talisman of Hierarchy. He'll try to pass the turn to me. I have some actions. I'll sack Destiny Spinner to Vizier Seer, describe one to the bottom, and then I will sacrifice my Birds of Paradise to Vizier Seer, describe one once again to the bottom. After that, we'll move to the fourth turn cycle. I'll start by doing what Black does best, and I'll cast Imperial Seal, a tutor. I'll lose two life and search my library for a Buried Alive and put it on top of my library. At this point, we're going to head into combat and attack Calvin for a grand total of four. I forgot that Jake has the uh, Monarch here. Then we're going to tap out for some mana, losing one of the Confluence to play Okame Adversary. After that, we're going to trigger Marin, get back the Birds of Paradise, and pass the turn to Jake. Jake retains the Monarch, so when that Court of Cunning triggers, he'll have everyone mill 10, except for me because he knows that the Graveyard deck just sat at the top of his library, even though in this case, it would have been a good idea to mill my Buried Alive. He'll drop Marsh Flats and Mana Crypt, then he'll tap the Marsh Flats, sacrificing it, losing a life, 
to lose two more life and shock and watery grave. After this point, he's going to tap all of his mana, it's going to be a grand total of six, and cast Merciless Eviction naming Creatures. With that eviction on the stack, I will use my Marin, sacrificing a bunch of creatures to the Vizier Seer to get experience counters. I'll leave that buried alive on top, and then at end step, Jake will draw a card, and then Steve wants to cast Snapcaster Mage. Snapcaster is going to flash back in Tomb, and he's going to use that in Tomb to go search his library for a copy of Perforos, God of the Forge, and put it in the bin. With nothing else, we'll actually move to Steve's turn. After untapping and drawing a card, Steve will drop a Swamp. There's two Urbergs out, so it's a Swamp, Swamp, Swamp. Then he'll cast Reanimate, and he's going to buy back Wanderwine Profits. Um, I'm going to pay... In response to the champion ability. Yeah, in response to the champion ability, I'm going to pay one to make a copy. Yep. This copy is going to champion the Wanderwine Profits. Yes, sir. This copy has haste because of Inala's ability. Mm -hmm. I'm going to attack uh, Adrian. No blocks. For a four. Uh, when this goes kind of yeah. Turn for kill. Any of you guys that have been watching the channel since I think literally the first video, you've seen that Steve's Anala deck has popped up. This is the third time now, and the first two times the deck didn't do anything. And I want to talk about that right after we talk about everything else because he's been working on this deck kind of the entire time. So if you go back, I think I'll leave the links to the other games with Anala in the description because Steve's a good buddy of all of us and he's kind of been tuning his deck as he plays with us on the channel and it's starting to pay off because his deck's gaining a lot of consistency. Luckily, he wasn't interacted with too much because there wasn't a whole lot of interaction to be had that early in the game. We'll talk about that in a moment. First, I want to talk about how everyone else, everyone else's decks did in the game and we'll start with kind of the least impactful decks starting with, sorry, Calvin, but you didn't really do anything. Calvin was playing his Edgar deck. We've seen it win. We've seen it lose, but this game, he kind of just went mana rock. I destroyed his mana rock. He played two other mana rocks and that's when he was going to start to like develop a board presence. The issue here is that I had the force of vigor in the first place. And then right after that, Steve won. So Calvin didn't really do anything. I don't think he generated a single token or body if I'm remembering the game correctly. Then we have Jake and Jake was playing his Varina build and this build isn't quite how I've seen Varina built in the past. This is a self mill or universal mill. Universal mill. It's kind of a universal mill deck. You saw the Court of Cunning was absolutely awesome. He actually chose not to mill me with the Court of Cunning because he was he used his cunning to realize that I had stacked the top of my deck while being fully aware that there was a Court of Cunning in play. So he, he opted to not mill me. It was kind of a six to one, half a, half a dozen the other situation. Although losing the Buried Alive could have been painful. I'm not really sure. It didn't really matter what happened at that point in the game though because we'll talk about me next. And I would have probably won within the next two turns if I got two more turns, which I didn't, because Steve immediately won upon getting access to his fourth turn. Could have been his third turn if it weren't for the Force of Vigor. Uh, my deck tries to do this thing with Protean Hawk. I'm not gonna go too deep in to the Protean Hawk chains. I think that might merit its own video, just talking about like how you can use Protean Hawk and Commander. There are probably already a lot of resources for that combo out there already. I want to shoot our own because I don't know, that could be something fun to discuss on either this channel or one of the other supporting channels like Neon yeah, Mushroom or Trigger. He's behind the camera right now, so you can't hi see him. Hi guys. He says hi. Last but not least, I want to get into Steve's deck and I'm going to use a visual aid while I talk about Steve's deck because you'll notice there was a fade out at the end of the video. You didn't fully understand how Steve won. If you know this combo, you did understand it, but I didn't leave all the audio in because I wanted to really explain this combo piece by piece because it's a really interesting combo that you only get to get away with when you're playing Anala. We're not gonna talk about how his deck interacted because it just didn't. He just did the combo when no one interacted with him and there were no blockers. So we have Anala. And uh, hopefully, I think I'll make Calvin edit this part of the video. So Calvin, put an image on the screen. Um, An Anala, functionally allows you every time a wizard, a non-token wizard, enters the battlefield under your control, you can pay a colorless. If you choose to do so, you make a token copy that has haste that leaves at the end step. There's a card called Wanderwine Profits. You'll notice that Steve tried to get that Wanderwine Profits into the graveyard as quickly as possible. So we're gonna talk about how he won using Wanderwine Profits. I'm gonna preface it with, it, it involves infinite turns kind of and infinite attacks, but the Wanderwine Profits has to connect. I'm not gonna get into what happens if there's blockers. Just note that he's drawing a ton of cards while he does this as long as one person doesn't have blockers. That'll make sense in a moment. But there were no blockers this game. So this is a really good time for us to just kind of break down how the combo works. And we'll start here, step one. Get Wanderwine Profits into play for very cheap. So step one, reanimate Wanderwine Profits. Once Wanderwine Profits has entered the battlefield, 
you're gonna hold that champion a merfolk trigger because you normally wouldn't have another merfolk in play when the Wanderwide Prophets enters the battlefield. However, Anala has a trigger because Wanderwide Prophets is also a wizard. When it comes into play, you hold the champion a merfolk trigger and then you allow Anala's trigger to resolve and you pay one mana. So now you're up to two mana being used for the turn to make a token copy of it. You let that thing's champion or merfolk trigger go onto the stack, resolve, and then we champion the Wanderwine Prophets, the original one, underneath the token. This token has haste. Step three is gonna be to attack with the token. You're gonna attack whoever's open. In this case, we had three players who were all tapped out and wide open. So you attack someone, they take the damage. We have another trigger going on the stack. This is Wanderwine Prophets. Hey, did you by any chance happen to deal damage with, with me this turn? Cool, would you like to sacrifice a Merfolk? If the answer is yes, well, your only Merfolk in this case is gonna be the Wanderwine Prophets, which works out perfectly. You're gonna sacrifice this Wanderwine Prophets, the token copy, and then because of how Champion works, the original Wanderwine Prophets will re-enter the battlefield. That's gonna have a Champion and Merfolk trigger go on the stack again. We're gonna look back to Anala, She'll trigger, you're gonna pay one mana. That's gonna get you another token copy of the Wanderwine Prophets. You're gonna allow that champion and folk trigger to resolve and hide the original copy under the token again. Now at this point, you've sacrificed your Merfolk, you've taken your extra turn, you're moving to your end step. Anala has this really annoying thing that happens at the end step. I guess it's not really that annoying. Anala forces you to sacrifice that token. That's where having the fourth mana becomes mandatory because you need to be able to pay for the other token copy. At the end step, Anala's gonna say, that token we made has to die. You're gonna sacrifice it at end step. You don't wanna respond to this. You wanna allow that trigger to resolve. You sacrifice the token, and then for a third time, your Wanderwine Prophets comes out from under a token copy of itself Triggers Champion and Merfolk, you hold it on the stack, then Anala goes, I saw that, Just pay one, hide it under another token copy, and take your next turn. Now, if you haven't been interacted with and no one can block, you can continue to do this much like Goto would do with combat phases, except for you're taking entire extra turns, meaning you're making land drops and drawing cards. If you have one or two open opponents, but one's not open, you're almost guaranteed to win the game, provided you built your deck correctly, because you're gonna keep drawing cards and playing lands. So by the time you've killed one or two of your opponents, that person over there with the blockers, you can remove the blockers pretty easily. Why did we go through all this, this process for this like five minute game to talk about this combo? I just think it's really cool. I wasn't aware of it until Steve brought it to the table and kind of just knocked us all out with it, especially considering the Marin deck. It's for anyone who wants to know, I'll leave the list in the description. This is not my Marin build. This is the, the CDH community. A few years ago, really respected the build. It's called Honorless Marin. But this at one point was like a CDH level deck and Steve's Anala deck is relatively budget friendly. So I thought some of you people who may be playing Anala as your commander that didn't know about that, now you know about it. And I, I kind of want to go over combos like this in videos a little bit more often because I'm not sure how to like outline some of these combos in videos. So we're going to play around with it because November's over. We have time to breathe, right, Calvin? Yeah. He's like, we have time to breathe. So we're going to try to provide content a little bit differently. That's all I have for you guys today. Um, it's Thank you so much for watching. As always, I will see you next time. Did it sound like I left enough break in there for you to cut?